Let's begin this video by sketching the path defined by the vector valued function r of t equals 3 cosine t i plus 4 sine t j plus t over 2 k. So this is going to represent a curve in space. So the i and the j, we can use a graphing calculator in parametric mode to determine the path um, without looking at the k component. So this would be, if we were looking at this curve in space from the positive z-axis, we would be looking down at the graph and seeing only um, two dimensions of the path. So if you press the y equals in parametric mode and enter 3 cosine t, and I'm in radian mode here, and y equals 4 sine t, and I start off with a standard zoom, go into zoom and 6 for standard, you see that the path that's, that is generated by the i and j components is the path of an ellipse. And you can do conversion equations to get from the parametric equations to the rectangular equations. So that's going to help me um, visualize part of this. I want to continue further here to determine what the three-dimensional graph is going to look like. And I'll start off with a table, t and r of t. And I'll plug in different values of time since we're dealing with trig functions here. I'm going to start off with say t equals 0, t equals pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. By plugging in 0 for t for all of these, you get the location on the path that would be the endpoint of this vector, 3, 0, 0. Now that's a point in space. So let's continue on. At t equals pi over 2, you get the vector 0, 4. And pi over 2 divided by 2, I'm going to just use a decimal to approximate it, approximately 0. 0.8. At t equals pi, and you can also trace along your with your calculator to see the first two components. At t equals 0, the location is 3, 0. At t equals and by graphing, pressing trace, we're going to trace um, at t equals pi over 2, you get the location is 0, 4, and then you need to plug it into the t over 2 to find the last component. At t equals pi, the location, or the vector that corresponds, would be negative 3, comma, 0, comma, approximately 1.6. At t equals 3 pi over 2, the location would be 0, negative 4, approximately 2.4. And at t equals 2 pi, the location would be 3, 0, and approximately 3.1. We're going to put those all together on a three-dimensional graph to determine what this path looks like in space. Those should all join up at the origin. This is your positive x-axis, your positive y-axis to the right, and your positive z-axis uh, going straight up. The first location is the vector with components 3, 0, 0, so that's going 3 units in the x-direction, 0 units in the y and z-direction. t equals pi over 2, that's 0 in the x, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y, and then approximately up a little bit 0.8. At t equals pi, the location is negative 3 in the x direction, 0 in the y, and up 1.6. About twice as high as the last point. At t equals 3 pi over 2, the location is 0, negative 4 in the y, and up 2.4, a little bit higher. And then finally, at t equals 2 pi, the location is 3, 0, and then up 3.1. So as it's being traced along this elliptical path, defined by the i and j components, the z component, or the k component, is increasing as time increases. Let's put those all together to make a path in space. And you can continue on. In increasing the value of t and sketching and you'll notice that this graph becomes like a spiral 
going up the page and do indicate the orientation as time increases the path is going around this spiral graph In the previous examples for section 12.1, we were given the function and we took that function and sketched a graph of the path. In this example, we're given some information about the path and we want to come up with the vector valued function. We want to find a piecewise vector valued function for the path connecting the point 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 6, and 0, 4. So I went ahead and sketched the path starting connecting the point 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 6, and then back to 0, 0. Now one model for straight path starting at a given point x sub 0, y sub 0 with a start time of t sub 0 and a change in the x of a and the change in the b, y of b is equal to the following. We can go ahead and use this to come up with three different pieces of the path. We will uh, look at, we can come up with this path, we'll call that r sub 1, this path we can say r sub 2, and this path is r sub 3. Uh, we can combine those together to get the three paths in a, in a single piecewise defined vector valued function. So if we are using this here, we're starting for r1, our x is going to equal x is equal to x sub 0, which is your starting x for r sub 1. That's going to be 0 plus how um, the x changes from the start point to the end point of the path. And that is going to be 4. So in this case, a would equal 4. And then t minus t sub 0, we'll, we'll start off with a start time of t equals 0 at this location, 0, 0. This ends up simplifying to x equals 4t. Now, in a similar way, you can use this equation for the y, where y is equal to your starting y. The starting y here is 0. The y does not change at all from the start and the end point, so we can call that 0 t minus 0, and this simplifies to y equals 0. And then we also want to give the time interval here. When you're using this, these general equations to come up with the path, your start time here is t equals 0, and the end time is going to be t equals 1. At t equals 1, you're at this location on the path. So what that will look like here our r of t, we're going to put them all together into one r of t, but we'll do each one separately. I'll go over each one so you can see where I'm coming up with these equations. So your x is equal to 4t, so we're going to write this as 4ti plus 0j, and we'll leave it like that, for the time interval from 0 to 1. That's your first piece of the path. For R2, we're going to use x equals, our starting x is at 4, so x is going to equal 4. How does the x change from the point 4, 0 to the point 0, 6? It changes by decreasing by 4. So we're going to write this as minus 4 and then t minus t sub 0, our start time for this second piece of the path is 1. So you get 4, that's your starting x. The x decreases by 4 to the end, ending x. And then t minus 1, since your time interval starts at 1 for that piece of the path. When you simplify this, you get the 4 minus 4 times the negative 1, so it ends up being 4 plus 4, which is 8 minus 4t. Now let's, let's figure out the equation for the y. 
y is equal to your starting y for this piece of the path in R2. The starting y is 0. The y increases by 6. So we're going to add 6. And then it's going to be t minus t sub 0. The, the start time for that piece is, is 1. When you simplify this, you get y equals 6t minus 6. And this is going to be from the time interval from t equals 1 to up here, t equals 2. So our second piece of the path we can define as 8 minus 4ti plus 6t minus 6j. And that is for the time interval from t equals 1 to t equals 2. If you're using these equations for um, the path, the time interval is always a one increment of time change from the start to the end if you're using those. Now, this is not unique. There are many, many ways of representing this path. I am, I am showing you one method. Now let's go ahead and find the last piece, the R3. To get the R3 using those general equations, you look at where your, your x starts. x starts at 0. How does it change from this point 0 to this point 0? It changes by 0. And the time start for that third piece is t equals 2, t sub 0 minus 2. When you simplify this, you get x equals 0. For the y, your y starts at 6 for R3. It decreases by 6 down to 0. So we have this minus 6 times the quantity t minus 2. When you simplify that, you get the path. That is 6 minus 6 times t. So 6 minus 6t plus 12. Or we could say y equals, when you take the 6 plus 12, you get 18 minus 6t. So that, when we combine that in our r sub t piecewise vector valued function, the path is 18 minus 6tj. And the time interval for that last path, piece of the path is starting at t equals 2, going one increment of time to t equals 3. Now you can, don't necessarily need that equality there in that so we could say t is less than. So there we go. That's our path that is defined by these three pieces of the path, piecewise vector valued function for the path that starts at 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 6, and ends back up at 0, 0.